Hello and welcome to Popcorn Mumbles, the podcast where we dig into the back catalog to select a film or television show to rewatch. I'm your host, Cody Nestor. Alongside me is my co-host, Todd Hill. What's up, guys? If you're enjoying the show, please consider following us on your podcast platform of choice and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Bon Jewelry continues as this week we have chosen the 1963 film From Russia with Love. Agent 007 is back in the second installment of the James Bond series, this time battling a secret crime organization known as Spectre. Russians Rosa Klebb and Kronstein are out to snatch a decoding device known as the Lecter, using the ravishing Tatiana to lure Bond <laughs> into helping them. Bond willingly travels to meet Tatiana in Istanbul, where he must rely on his wits to escape with his life in a series of deadly encounters with the enemy. From Russia with Love was released in the U.S. on May 27, 1964. On a budget of $2 million, it made $24 million. It has a Rotten Tomatoes score of 97% and an audience score of 84%. So, Todd, let's discuss From Russia with Love. Spoilers are ahead. Okay. Todd, you're up first. Where do you want to start? Uh, coming off the success of the uh, first uh, Bond movie, Dr. No, uh, we go with From Russia with Love. Uh, many people consider this one of the better Ian Fleming novels I've heard. Yeah, the uh, this is the fifth book in the Ian Fleming's classic saga of Secret Agent James Bond. I had a little note here that uh, there was a March 17th, 1961 Life magazine article in which uh, John F. Kennedy actually listed his 10 favorite novels of all time and From Russia With Love was on that list. I heard he was, re he was reading it in Dallas that day. I have heard that. There was also... <laughs> No, you haven't. I have not. I was that. talking about his assassination, you <laughs> dummy. <laughs> okay, you got me. Uh, anyway, sorry. Anyway, there was also a book uh, called Death of a President published by author William Raymond Manchester in 1964. And reportedly, this was one of the last movies JFK ever saw. There was a private screening at the White House. Yeah, gotcha. So, Todd, uh, tell our listeners, what is 007's assignment this time around? So basically, we have the return of Spectre, and uh, they're trying to get their hands on a Russian lector, which is a decoding device, and uh, they're going to kind of set it up to play Russia against the uh, British government. Uh, they got this ploy to get this Russian file clerk. Uh, she's supposed to kind of be uh, sending a note over to uh, the Russian, uh, not the Russian embassy, but the British, uh, kind of, uh, in, you know, say, hey, you know, uh, I've got this lector. I got access to it. Uh, they're trying to draw James Bond out as well. You know, Kronstein makes this comment, you know, that most assuredly on a mission of this caliber that the the British will send their top agent, which is James Bond. She kind of sends over this picture of herself, you know, uh, come over here to Istanbul. You get me and the lector. <laughs> this is what's waiting <laughs> for you, big right. boy. And, of course, Bond and them both agree it's definitely a trap. But, mm. you know, if we got a chance to get our hands on a lector, we're going for it, right? And they want to. <laughs> they want to use Tatiana. Spectre wants to use Tatiana to to steal the, the lector, draw Bond out, kill Bond, take the lector, and sell it back to the Russians who they stole it from in the first place. Right. Is really is really what uh, what the the ultimate plan is. How, how do you or how does Spectre go about accomplishing that? Who do they send after? Uh, Bond in this case they to make send, sure that happens. They send who, what I feel is kind of who they've trained to be their answer to James Bond, which is Red Grant. Played by uh, Robert, Robert Shaw, Shaw here. Uh, uh, and probably I would say, I think I have it in my notes, he is the, um, I would say, the kind of best counter agent to James Bond behind, I think, I think he would rank number two on my list behind like an Alec Trevelyan as right. like the best kind of right. counter agent to to 007 in the entire film series. Yeah, they don't actually come out and say it in the movie. They may mention it in a novel, but I, I kind of get this feeling they've kind of trained him. Spectre has to be like their answer to James Bond. He's their Bond. Right, exactly. <clears throat> Um, we kind of catch up with 007. He's uh, having a little bit of R&R &R with uh, Sylvia Trench. Sylvia Trench, Who yeah. returns again from her uh, her appearance in Dr. No. Yeah. Kind of as, a, kind of, I guess, as a James Bond's kind of running girlfriend in the first couple of films here, which is a nice little touch. It's, it's nice to see some continuity or a continuity uh, kind of kept up with these uh, these Bond films a little bit. Exactly, yeah. Um, and then we kind of, like I said, he gets his, uh, he gets his assignment from – MI6 heads to Istanbul and, and kind of hooks up with um, a character in there, there named uh, Karim Bey. Karim Bey. I really enjoy Karim Bey in this film. Like, you know, in Dr. No, you kind of get um, you get Felix Leiter, Jack Lord, and you get, um, 
I can't think of his name. Uh, the guy that drives the boat. Oh, Quarrel. Quarrel. Like you kind of get some, uh, you know, some secondary characters that Bond interacts with. But uh, Karim Bay is kind of our our uh, supporting character that kind of guides Bond through what's going on in Istanbul and kind of the inner workings. Kind of shows him around and kind of gets him set up in Istanbul. But I really enjoy Karim Bay in this film. What about you? Exactly. Uh, it was a great performance by uh, I think his name was uh, Pedro Armendariz. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, apparently everybody that works for him is one of his sons. <laughs> yeah, got a lot of sons. And he's got a lot of sons. <laughs> yeah, I really, I really enjoy uh, that, you know, part of his character is that he's, like, very put out by having to have sex with his really attractive girlfriend. Oh, yeah. He's like, back to the salt mines. <laughs> like, just a love that's part of his character is just being so put out by having to have sex with this beautiful, beautiful woman. Darling. Right. I, I no longer please you. Be still. Back to the salt mines. Uh, so this is this is Sean Connery's second time out as, as Bond here. So what do you think about his performance here compared to like Doctor No? I think it was uh, on par with Doctor No, if not maybe you know a little bit better. Uh, no secret, Sean Connery is my favorite Bond. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Sean is always kind of been able to blend like all the elements that kind of make up Bond better than maybe any other Bond, in my opinion. You know, he's got the quippy stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, he's got he's a good hand to hand combatant. You know, he's got the espionage. He's got the spy stuff down. Right. It's just it's a perfect blend right here. I think. And he also has very hairy legs. Very hairy. Legs. <laughs> Did you notice that when he's sitting in that boat with Sylvia? Trench? I noticed that. Yeah. He's like the guy's like Robin Williams. Like just ooh. It's just if you picture. You try to picture like early 1960s, like suave and cool. You, you don't go down that list far without hitting Sean Connery as James Bond. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. It's right there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, before Bond heads off to Istanbul, I forgot to mention, we get our first appearance uh, by Desmond Llewellyn as Q. That's right, yeah. Uh, a long-running member of the Bond franchise mm -hmm. from, from that point forward in the series. Uh, I have a little little trivia here for you, Todd. Just uh, uh -oh. a quick question <clears throat> about it, if I can uh, if I can find it. Do you remember what Q's real name is, Todd? Oh, Lord. You've lost me. <laughs> I believe it's stated in Dr. No that his name is Major Boothroyd. Ah, okay. And uh, But he's always known from us from here as, on as Q. as Q or the quartermaster, but, but as Q. Um, but, yeah, another big – you kind of – you get through these early films, you kind of see them add little, little by little, add to that Bond mythology. You know, here, the first is Bond and, you know, who he is and some of the his mannerisms and things that he does that will carry throughout the film franchise. Here you add kind of Q, you know, going forward into something like Goldfinger, you start to get the Aston Martin and the car. Just right. You build slowly and slowly into what the kind of character kind of becomes uh, through these the, the definitely these first kind of three to four films, you get a lot of foundation that lasts for the next however Bond, however long Bond has been going at this point. Was it over 50 years, 70 years? What is uh, it? Gotta be over, it's over 50 now. Yeah, right? for sure. A few years back, they released like a 50th anniversary box set. So exactly. It's over that now, definitely. Um, there's a kind of a, a little bit of subplot with Karim Bay. So while Bond is in Istanbul, he is kind of made part of this little um, kind of what's what's the term that I'm looking for kind of like a, 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 a kind of politics of what's going on with Karim Bay and the Russians right and like he kind of gets embroiled in that a little bit there's a uh, multiple assassination attempts against Karim Bay they try to bomb him that he gets saved because he had to have sex with his girlfriend, yeah. even, even though he didn't want to. He didn't want to do he, it. Gets, he gets saved from being, you know, from them bombing him. Um, he, him and Bond end up at a, a gypsy camp at one point, taking in. I felt like uh, they go to the gypsy camp, and uh, they they get brought in by um, – they get brought in by the, like the the leader of the camp, and they sit at his table. And uh, they've they've come on a night that two gypsy girls are going to fight over a man that they both love. Yeah, and they're going to fight over him. And for a minute there, you, I kind of felt like Kramer from Seinfeld. Like, eh, can't fight. <laughs> <laughs> can't, can't fight. Can't fight. Right. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. Uh, but like, 
you kind of get brought into uh, – they make another assassination attempt against Karim Bay. I can't remember the guy's name. Do you remember the name of the guy that's trying to take him out? I know some kind of Russian agent-type spy, but I don't remember his exact name. Exactly. But he, he brings a bunch of guys in there to the uh, the gypsy camp to try to assassinate Karim Bay at that point. Um, he – he, Karim Bay does take a shot in the arm, but he does fail to assassinate him. I like during that scene, though, we see uh, Grant kind of skulking around yeah. the camp as well. And I like the element that he's trying to keep Bond alive. He's kind of like being his guardian angel, which he kind of references and kind of tells Bond to his face later on. Yeah, he actually shoots someone and yeah, saves him. Shoots a couple, couple of people to try to actually save Bond. So, like, I really like that element of, like, you know, kind of, and he does some other things throughout the film to kind of look out for Bond because they need Bond. They need Bond to meet Tatiana. They need him to get the lector from him. They need him to like deliver it to them, and then you know, then they need to get rid of Bond. There's also a nice little uh, musical number in that Gypsy Camp fight. I, I don't quote me. I think it's actually n- named or called 007. You know that little bit of music it plays there. It kind of shows up at other times in different films, mm-hmm. kind of like that. Da, 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 da. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I know what you're I think about. it's actually officially called 007. I may be wrong, but that's a great little piece of music that gets its first introduction here. Okay. Yeah. Um, all the assassination attempts fail against Karim Bey. Um, Karim Bey's tired of the, the Russian guy shit trying to kill him. So they uh, they kind of pack everything in together, and him and Bond go on an assassination mission. They go, they figure out where he's staying. They send, again, some more of Karim Bey's sons <laughs> to ring his doorbell. And uh, he climbs out of a, uh, a kind of a billboard. Uh, it's like a girl's bottom like, half of her face, and like she's right. like smiling. He's like climbing out of her mouth. I think her, there's a trap door or a window light in mm. her mouth, and it's like she's opening her mouth. <laughs> exactly. Um, <laughs> it's just and like he uses Bond's sniper rifle to kind of assassinate him, and like just kind of good setup here overall for like you know it's not completely. You know, it's not super, super related to what we'll see later, but it's still kind of good development. And, like, you know, you never feel like you're, like, wasting your time with some of the subplots here. It's, it's just like, good, just, like, espionage, espionage spy just, stuff. Exactly, exactly. Uh, take it from here, Todd. Where do you want to go? So, uh, basically, I think we get uh, kind of from here we get Bond back at his motel room. Mm-hmm. Uh, he kind of goes in. He's drawing a bath. He kind of hears some noises, kind of thinks, you know, hey, somebody in here with me? Right. Kind of goes back out, gets his gun, and he kind of gets a glimpse of a naked lady <laughs> slipping into bed. Oof. <laughs> a little shot of Tatiana going by the window, yeah. man. I'll tell you what, for 1963. Risque. It still, Risque. still holds up well today. Uh-huh. Uh, but yeah, he uh, he finds uh, Tatiana, which he they you know she eventually they just refer to as Tanya for most of the film. She's uh, naked in his bed. She's ready for her little uh, she's ready for her little Jimmy Bond loving. Yep. Uh, but little little did they, did they know that Spectre is also recording their little. Uh, Romantic entanglement, they got a little two-way reverse glass kind of thing going exactly. on. Exactly. So they're uh, a little voyeurism as Spectre kind of records the whole thing uh, <laughs> in their hotel room. Uh, it comes back a little bit later in the film as well. But yeah, we kind of see them. Uh, I, there's a. I think I read some stuff about like they had to really kind of cut back showing the cameraman and stuff from that. From I that, heard that yeah. from that scene <clears throat> because it was like you know. That kind of voyeurism, risque stuff was just a little too much for the the censors back in 1963. So they had to like kind of pull back from showing too much of Bond and Tanya kind of being recorded. So let's see. I think from there we go to uh, they decide they're going to meet the next day in one of the mosques, mm-hmm. and uh, I think Tanya is going to drop the uh, the plans for the layout for the Russian consulate where she's got where she works with the lector on a, on a on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's also this other Russian agent that's kind of been tailing him throughout the movie. Uh, he's got wears glasses. I think he had a cap on. Mm-hmm. He's there, and of course, Red Grant's there as well. And uh, Bond kind of sees the Russian agent kind of going for the. It looks like a little compact that Tanya's dropped. Mm-hmm. And, uh, he's. Uh, it's got a map of the Russian consulate. Right, kind of something she's hand drew, and uh, you know he's trying to go for it and you know get to it before the agent does but grant actually takes out the russian agent for bond cuz mm-hmm. you know bond's got to get to the lector so exactly. nothing's going to hold that up so he takes him out you know cut chop chop 
He's <laughs> <out>. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Gives him an old Judy chop to the neck a couple yeah, times. He's and takes, out. Takes him out for Bond. Yeah, there's a really great scene on a on a uh, like a kind of a, a boat. Uh, What's the term I'm looking for? It's like a ferry. Like a ferry, exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, with Bond and Tanya on a ferry, and Bond's got like a kind of a video recorder, uh, camera recorder, and he's like recording her, her voice, and he's uh, he's wanting her to describe the lector so that they know she's not full of shit. Right. How and many keys does it have? What type of keys? Exactly. How big is it? Right. The dimensions. Uh, yeah. How big is it, James? <laughs> um, <laughs> But uh, it's a great little because, like, it, it's set against uh, M and the rest of MI6 also listening to that later. You kind of see it a little bit real time, and then we fade into M and MI6 kind of listening to that recording. It's a table of, like, M and, like, six other guys and then, of course, Money Penny. Yeah. And it's just, like, little stuff where, like, Bond is, like, you know, can you, you know, describe what this is? And she's like, will you make love to me? And when we get to England, James, he's like day and night. He's just like, he can't even be bothered by it. You right. know, he's like, just come on. Just like, keep give me talking. the information. Yeah, give me the information. Yes, yes. I will pork you all the time man. <laughs> <laughs> once we reach England. Like, you know, it's just like a little great scene. And then you get him like back at, you know, they're, they're listening to it. And there's like a Bond starts going into a story. He's like, how, how's this set up? I can't remember exactly. She asks him, she asks, uh, Tatiana asks James something. He's like, well, you know, there's at one time uh, me and him was in Tokyo. Yeah. Right? And him's like, he cuts it off right quick. That's all, Miss Money Penny. Exactly. That'll be all. Him and I got an old Tokyo <laughs> sandblaster. Like, uh, you know, it's like, it's like good little, just good little gag and stuff. But yeah, Grant's keeping Bond alive. They've, he's got to get the lector and they've got to get him on board the train, which is kind of uh, most of our third act of the film is Bond and Tatiana and Karim Bay boarding a train. Uh, Karim Bay has set it up. He's uh, kind of, uh, he's bribed the conductor to set them off or to, to stop the train at a certain point. Right. They're supposed to be picked up by his son, one of his sons, one of his many sons, uh, to kind of pick them up, take them across the border. Bond and Tatiana get back across the border, get back to England, mission complete. But who's also on the train, of course, Todd? Uh, besides Red Grant, who sneaks on the train, there's also, as they're trying to board it, there's one of those guys from the Russian consulate kind of notices Tatiana. He gets on the train too. Yes, yes. So uh, that's uh, they pick. That's something that I think Karim Bay eventually picks up on is that he noticed Bond that was followed by one of the consulate guys. Mm -hmm. They find him. Uh, he kind of keeps him uh, kind of occupied a little bit. Karim Bay does, and he's kind of sitting in uh, the little room with him. They stuck like, a they stick a sock or something in his mouth. Yeah, like pull, pull his, his jacket, jacket down, down around his arms. And yeah. Karim Bay's like, "Let me tell you about my life." <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you can see that dude just like, "Just shoot me, shoot me." <laughs> Um, but yeah, like I said, Grant also gets on the car. Just a lot of good kind of setup and payoff throughout the whole thing with Grant. But like, uh, we see eventually that once Karim Bay and the guy from the consulate is kind of left alone, Grant comes in and works his magic. He ends up killing the guy from the consulate and Karim Bay yeah. kind of makes it look like they, he sets up the scene to make it look like they killed each other. So that takes with, with Karim Bay dead, the, that means they're not going to stop the train. They're not going to get off at that point. Their escape route at that point is basically blown, blown exactly. Yeah. So they have to figure out something to do. So I think at one of the next stops, Bond gets a message to back to – who does he give the message to? He gives it to – tells oh, he tells Karim Bay's son. That's right. It's his son. He yeah. meets one of, another Karim Bay's son. <laughs> Thank God he's got like 26 sons or Bond would have <laughs> never made it out of Istanbul. Right. Um, but he tells one of Karim Bay's son. He gives him his father's um, cigarette holder. He gives him his wallet. You know, kind of you'll want these. Your father's dead kind of thing. Uh, I need you to get a message to him. I need a way out. Send another – They you know send another agent to help me. And my six sends another agent, but of course, again intercepted by none other than Red Grant. Quint himself. Yeah. Uh Red Grant. He uh he sees him at the train station, takes him into the bathroom. Again, we assume he gives him an kills him. Yeah, a couple another Judy chops to the neck, and then takes on the persona of what is his name? I think the guy's Nash. Nash. Yeah. Nash. Yeah. So then he is in character as Nash, and then he introduces himself to Bond. They have uh through the film, we we see it a couple times through the film. It's like, uh, uh, do you have a do you have a match? And he's, oh yeah, how is this? It's I like, prefer a lighter myself yeah. until they go wrong. Yeah, or exactly. Something like something that. like that. It's yeah. like you know one of those espionage kind of code yeah. words. Him and Nash kind of have that little, and then you can see Bond is 
wary of him still kind of from the beginning. From the beginning, go he's kind of skeptical. Yeah, he, he remarks to him about how fit he is for, like, someone who's probably just supposed to be uh, MI6 agents that just rides the desk. Right. He's, like, you know, kind of remarks about how uh, kind of fit he is. So just off the bat, you kind of notice that he's, like, a little sketch. A little I mean. sketch. Uh, let, let's set this up, too. So uh, in the film... Uh, for for our cars and our gadgets and our weapons this time around. So Bond uh, doesn't do, doesn't really do any driving in this film. There is a car that he has in the film. It's a 1935 Bentley 3.5 liter. It's the one at the beginning of the film right. that he uses the uh, the car phone, the way ahead of its time car phone. Right. Uh, the gadgets in this film, we get the pager, which is what alerted him to call headquarters in the very beginning. At the at the beginning, the car phone, uh, the briefcase. That's what we really need it's to set up here. Uh, Q provides him a briefcase that they're going to make standard for all uh, all double O agents. The briefcase includes, I think they say, twenty rounds of ammunition. I think you're right. Uh, a throwing knife in the side that can be accessed. Uh, the AR seven folding sniper's rifle, which is what him and Karimbe used to kill the the Russian dude coming out of the girl's mouth. Uh, Fifty gold sovereigns, uh, and it has a, a magnetized talcum powder tear gas canister that can be attached on the underside of the briefcase, and it has a defense mechanism that if you open the case normally, the talcum powder will release the tear gas onto you. It'll blow back in your face unless you turn the latches kind of horizontally and open them in the way only Bond knows how to open them. Right. Other gadgets include, the we mentioned the camera voice recorder, and uh, Grant himself does have a gadget of his own. He has the uh, the watch Garot. The garot wire. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, we'll also see later uh, uh, Miss Klebb's poison shoe dive. Yes. But we haven't quite got there. So do you want to uh, kind of take us through, I guess, um, the dinner with Grant and then the, the pursuing uh, fracas or f- after uh, after dinner? So they kind of get back to uh, their car and uh, Grant as Nash is kind of, you know, going over, you know, kind of what his escape route is going to be. And, you know, he's like, you know, I'm famished. You know, I haven't had anything to eat. You mind if we go to the dining car? And, you know, James agrees and him and, and uh, Tanya go with him and uh, – they're sitting there and waiting. They all three order the fish. Well, Tanya, she's just kind of, eh, whatever. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. And so they're kind of talking back and forth. We thing. should say, I guess, the reason she's kind of like, eh, Bond kind of roughs her up a little bit. He does. He after Karimbe's done. She, uh, he kind of gets the notion that she maybe knew something about what happened to Karimbe, and he comes back and gets a He gets gives her a couple of Barbara Walters. He gets a little handsy <laughs> with her, yeah. Right. I don't know what you mean. Liar. <laughs> And uh, so they're 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 ordering their meals, and uh, of course Bond I think orders like a white wine mm-hmm. with Grant, fish. Grant of orders a red wine with mm-hmm. fish. Mm-hmm. Sucks. Yeah, the waiter's like a <laughs> white wine, and no, no, the red. No, the red guy. Exactly. And so they're kind of eating and having a little meal, and uh, Grant kind of uh, accidentally, but not accidentally, knocks over Tatiana's drink, and he pours her another, and he kind of slips a little chloral little pill, hydrate. Yeah, a little pill into her drink, so kind of taking her out of the action. Cosby. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then Bond, uh, him, him and uh, the Bond and Grant take Tanya, uh, Tanya back to their to their uh, uh, their their car, and uh, we then get between Bond and uh, Grant. I would say probably top five best fight exactly. in the entire Easy. James Bond gotta series. Be. Gotta be. Uh, the fight between him and, and Grant inside the car is just uh, it's just so well executed. It's like uh, the, the 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 setting, knocking out the light, just the kind of the physicality of it. You get the breaking of the glass so you can hear the clackety-clack of the train. Yeah, like I read that, you know, they did pretty much the whole thing themselves. You don't mm-hmm. get a lot of stunt doubles or cut away from people's faces. Like, it's really kind of visceral. Like I said, it's got to be top five fights in Bond films, like, you know, just all time, really. Like, I just, I really love the fight scene. Yeah, it's an amazing fight scene. Um Eventually, Grant does get the better of Bond in the situation. Uh, he kind of has him uh, kind of uh, down on the ground. He kind of gives him a Judy chop to the back of the neck. Right. Um, let's see. Wait a minute. Am I getting my? Am I getting mixed up? I think that's what starts it. Doesn't well, they kind of get back, and uh, you know, he's like, you know, he slipped Tatiana the Mickey. She's out. Mm. And he's like, you know, she's come over faint, so right. she's come over ill. And, <laughs> old man. Yeah, old man. He keeps calling him old man. Right. Grant keeps calling Bond old man. So. They kind of put her to bed. They get into the other portion of the car, and Bond's immediately like, well, what'd you slip her? What'd you knock her out right. with? 
And, you know, he's kind of still trying to stay in character as Nash. He's like, well, you know, my escape route's only for one old man. Yeah, Bond, you know? Bond has pulls his gun on him, and he's like, well, yeah. I, all right, I can buy that. Puts his gun back away. Do you want her or do you want the lecture? Right, exactly. <laughs> and so he kind of trying to show him on the map the escape route, and he's kind of, Bond's kind of leaning down looking. That's where he gives him the That's old, where he gives him the, the old job. job. Yeah, yeah, that takes place before their actual fight. Yeah. Because Bond, uh, Bond is also on the ground. Uh, this is where we kind of set up the briefcase, right? This is where the kind of that comes in because Bond asks him, uh, you know, at this point he's he's kind of uh, – uh, he kind of first asked for like a last cigarette. Yeah, he's like, he's yeah. like, you know, he's like cigarette, and yeah. Grant's like, not a chance. And he's yeah. like, I'll buy it. You know, I'll buy one. And he's like, with what? Yeah. That's what he tells him about the fifty gold sovereigns in the case. And two, it's not just I don't. It's I'm not sure if it's Bond's case or Nash's case, but um, because both cases, uh, who, see, this is what I didn't I didn't really think about it till now. So like, Bond has his case with the talcum powder, mm-hmm. but like. There's two cases get open in the scene, right? Right. Was Nash's case also outfitted? Like a double O case? It would have to have been a double O case. I didn't know if Nash was a double O or not. Because they say only double O's are getting them. So by the logic of the film, Nash would have had to have been a double O. Because the way I kind of interpret it is, is the first case, Bond opens himself. And Mm -hmm. he knows how to rotate it, of course. And he gives him And you see him rotate it really quickly and open it. Yeah. And and then there's, I think there's some kind of line where he's like, well, there's more in this other case as well. And he goes to open it. And Grant's like, ah, you know, you might be going to pull a gun out of that one. Right. Or a throwing knife. I'll open that one myself. (laughs) Right. Exactly. And that's that's, when he gets a talc full. Yeah. Tear gas, uh, talcum powder canister and blows. And that's what leads into our, our really fantastic fight. Uh, Bond does end up winning the fight, of course. Uh, has a great line where he's like, uh, he he gets the money back off of him that he took from Bond yeah. and the stuff back, and he's like, you know, he won't, won't be needing this anymore, old man. Old man, you know, <laughs> just <laughs> just man. really great stuff. Like it you is. said, Sean Connery, they never go at least in the early films, they never go too crazy with the quips. It's just just enough to be really good little delivered lines. Yeah, it's just it's just good delivery. I never really felt like, at least far as, as we are now, that Sean's quips kind of went over the line like the more ones do yeah 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 we'll get there one day (laughs) we'll get there one day um do you want to take us through like kind of the the little ending we got two kind of more major set pieces in a way like action scenes kind of one after the other you want to kind of quickly go through those so uh i'm part of uh grant's plan was it was like his truck is pulled across the train tracks it's like it was hauling flowers on the back Mm -hmm. and uh bond and tanya get off and uh bond kind of gets to drop on the driver knocks him out they take him along and uh they kind of you know tanya's still suffering the effects of whatever grant slipped her so he throws her in the back with the flowers he's like sleep it off back here right and he drives on through to whatever the escape route was going to be and they get attacked by a chopper mm-hmm. it's like a little kind of little tiny ass two-seater chopper right. the guy's like in the chopper the pilot's up there but the other guy in the the co-pilot's like dropping grenades yeah you see it like kind of blow the like you know kind of hits the side of the truck a little bit. Bond stops the truck, tells Tanya to get out, hide under the truck. He takes his sniper rifle, kind of uh, got a little bit of like, I don't know, what's that film? North by Northwest, where like the plane's going right, over. Right. And like you get a little bit of that uh, kind of stuff where the, they're flying the chopper really close. I think I read too that they got really close and almost endangered Sean Connery yeah, I at one I point. I read that the driver or the pilot was kind of a little bit inexperienced. He got right. maybe a little bit closer than he should have. Exactly. <laughs> um, but Bond ends up hiding behind kind of this rock he kind of outcrop. He ends up sniping the co-pilot, causing him to drop the grenade. That blows up the helicopter. Right. Really enjoyed the helicopter scene. The boat scene, I think, is 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 a little weak. Right. I don't think you really needed the boat scene. I think you could have just went boat scene to the finale. Gotcha. Like I don't think you really needed the Spectre to like because basically they take the truck. Then at that point they take it to uh, where they the the next part of the escape plan was taking the truck to a boat. Mm-hmm. The boat's loaded down with like you know, four or five barrels of fuel, right. and that's supposed to take them. You know, was supposed to take Grant to wherever his destination was. Obviously, Bond and them are headed towards you know towards uh, England and you know towards London, but they set off out on the ocean and they eventually get kind of uh, set upon by a bunch of Spectre agents in boats. And they kind of have a little bit of a chase and you kind of see Spectre kind of shoot the barrels on the back of the, on the back of their boat. Bond pushes them out into the the water. And eventually they're kind of in between Bond 
and they're kind of trapped around those barrels that are leaking the fuel and bond kind of blows them up with uh shooting a flare into the into the water kind of igniting the fuel in the barrels and it's like i don't know just a little weak like some of the shots are a little like there's a there's a part where like one of the boats like barely on fire and it like clips a boat that's not on fire and it's like as soon as they touch it's like <laughs> you know what i mean right? like it's a little like i'm not saying it's bad at all but i think it's weaker and i think you kind of you kind of could have got away with not even having that not scene. having that scene exactly okay. but they had two million dollars they doubled the budget from the first one so shoot that scene we're gonna spend it exactly <laughs> uh what's our finale dodd so I think they make it to Venice, and yes. uh, they're at a little motel there, hotel, and uh, Tatiana's kind of out on a patio. Bond's making a phone call, and uh, we see uh, the uh, housekeeping. Housekeeping. Housekeeping, but it's not housekeeping. Right. It's, it's old Rosa Klebb yeah. come to put her mitts on the lecture, or try to. <laughs> try to. She's dressed in her, in her little maid's outfit. Right. And uh, our finale of the film, uh, if you can believe it, after taking out... Um, multiple people taking out like Red Grant, taking out a helicopter, taking out boats full of Spectre agents. The 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 last fight of the film is Bond fighting an old lady with a chair. <laughs> He's got her pinned up against the wall with the chair, trying to avoid that knife toe. Exactly. She's got a uh, a, a boot that in her uh, a knife sticking out of her boot. That's uh, we see earlier. It's a poison tip. Poison tip. Because yeah. it is used by the uh, one of the Spectre commanding officers to uh, put it into. Uh, Cronstein's ankle yeah. and poison him to kill him as well. Uh, we, sh- we also mentioned too, we, we get our first appearance of not fully, but we get our first appearance of Blofeld. True. Also true. in this film. But yeah, it's Bond versus Rosa Klebb <laughs> in their hotel room. Bond's like using a chair against her like she's like a lion. He's, he's just missing the whip. He's got like the little stool in the whip. Back. Exactly. Back. Uh, and eventually she gets, uh, her gun was knocked away. Tanya gets her gun and ends up shooting Rosa. And uh, you get the uh, the kind of the Bond. He makes one more quip and I forget what he says. She's had her kicks. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's it. That's it. She had her kicks, and then uh, you know, uh, Tanya and Bond are kind of left to their own devices. We can imagine what they did the rest of the evening, right? On the way back to the uh, to London, yeah, we see them again on a little gondola going down the. That's it. Roll credits. That's it. Roll Cue credits. from Russia with Love. Proper song. <laughs> yes, true. The opening credits here. Uh, we didn't really we didn't really talk about them uh, too much, but the opening credits here. I, I, I was telling you that a couple of days ago. I always thought the from Russia with Love theme song, if you would, was like the opening credits, but it's a like kind of instrumental version of that. Um, in the opening credits, so we don't really get a, a full on theme song until our next. Uh, James Bond outing here. Yeah. And we also have one final first right here at the end. It says, and James Bond will return. Will return. And in this case, <laughs> it was in Goldfinger. But yes, the first instance of James Bond will return. Uh, I got some notes here just kind of going through the film. Uh, stuntman Bob Simmons again stands in for Sean Connery in the gun barrel sequence. Uh, the sound of the fake Bond is a fake James Bond with a mask at, at the first where Red Grant is practicing against. Right. The sound of the fake Bond's mask being removed is just unpleasant to me. It was like some kind of... It was yeah. Yeah. It's just ugh. like an octopus suctioning on you or something. Uh, a, la- <laughs> <laughs> uh, a lady appears in the opening title sequence for the first time. Uh, I like the credits being projected onto the belly dancer. That was cool. Uh, <laughs> the, there's an opening. Kronstein is, a, I guess, a chess master. Uh, I just noted everyone is smoking, just playing chess and smoking. <laughs> uh, uh, Blofeld, as we mentioned, first uh, appearance of Blofeld. You were telling me this. Who provides the body for Blofeld, Todd? That was actually the actor that played uh, Professor Dent from Dr. No. Nice. And I believe I read that he also did it in Thunderball. They had a similar situation where it was just his lap, an arm, and a cat. <laughs> <laughs> the title of my new uh that's my autobiography yeah a lap an arm and a cat <laughs> exactly uh i noted dr no and blofeld have a thing for fish apparently ah, yeah. blofeld has siamese fighting fish uh i mentioned this before donald grant is the best counter agent foiled with james bond behind alec trevelyan in my opinion oh we didn't mention this there's a part in the the when uh 
Cleb is looking for an agent to pull off this mission. She goes to the Spectre training grounds and first sees uh, Red Grant <laughs> right. to kind of suss him out. Uh, there's a part where she secretly puts on a pair of brass knuckles and just belts him right in the gut yeah. unexpectedly. And I just imagine it like where, <laughs> like, just to me, like, it would just be so funny. She, like, belts him in the gut. He's like, why would you do that? <laughs> why would you do I've that? got Crohn's. I'm working for you. I've got diverticulitis. <laughs> Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh God! Uh, I, I I didn't look at I didn't I didn't research this. Uh, I was going to ask you: Does is this the first film Bond film to feature the hat toss? I don't remember if he did it in Doctor No. As he does it in this film. As we're sitting here, I don't actually remember if he I tossed it in Doctor No. I think this is the first one this that he does be, the hat yeah. toss. Uh, we miss uh, we mentioned Desmond Llewellyn's first appearance. Um, I'm, I wrote here, Sean Connery sees rats in the sewer. He hates rats, Todd. Because he's, he's also... <laughs> he's scared to death of them. <laughs> he's also Indy's dad, He's also you know. Henry Jones Sr. <laughs> um, in the gypsy camp, uh, apparently the gypsies only have one horny guard that's like peering over that little fence, you know? <laughs> uh, in that gypsy camp scene, Karimbe is clearly is shot and clearly rubs his arm with blood. Do you notice that? I have never caught it. Yeah, he clearly rubs the blood uh, on okay. his arm. I... <laughs> uh, I wrote Bond seeing Tanya through the hotel room window makes my pants tight. Whoa. <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see here. And everything else I think we kind of we kind of uh touched on, like I said, after thrilling sequences of espionage on a train, destroying a helicopter and multiple boats, Bond fights an old lady using a chair in the finale. Uh, I got some double O no's here for you, Todd. Okay. These are, these are, these are goofs, things that happen during the filming. When Kronstein meets Blofeld, the specter ring moves from the left hand pinky finger, the one used to push the button on the desk, to the right hand pinky finger showing, uh, shown stroking the cat in the next scene. Oh. When Tatiana gets into Bond's bed, the amount of lipstick she has on changes. Heavy when filmed from one angle and non-existent when kissing 007. The flower truck that is first seen at the railroad crossing is a Dodge, and after 007 enters the pickup with the villain in the cab, the truck switches to a Chevrolet. Oh. Uh, the truck hood is burned, and the inside headlight is missing by air bombing from the helicopter. Then in the next scene, it is totally intact. Which is I, I, something I did notice when, when they pull into the, the dock for the boat. Uh, and the last double O no here, a machine gun from directly behind shoots holes in the fuel barrels on Bond's boat, yet the holes are in the ends of the barrels, and the barrels are turned sideways on the boat. It's shown being shot on the ends of them, but if you see them on the boat, they're actually turned horizontal. There's no way they could have shot the ends of the barrels. Wow. Uh, I'll go through my Bond bits, Todd, if you have any of these. Okay. Uh, if we overlap here, just let me know if you got anything different. Uh, this movie broke uh, broke this movie broke box office records and was responsible for launching Sir Sean Connery as a major star rather than 1962's Doctor No. Sir Sean Connery called this movie his personal favorite of his Bond movies. Steven Spielberg was convinced to cast Robert Shaw in Jaws in 1975 after watching him in this movie. Nice. Final James Bond movie released during Ian Fleming's lifetime. He died one month before Goldfinger in 1964, was released in the UK. This movie marks the last appearance of Sylvia Trench, who also appeared in Dr. No. The original plan was for Trench to appear in each movie as Bond's regular girlfriend, continually frustrated when Bond is called away for his next assignment. Uh, I'm going to probably fuck her name up, but 21-year-old Daniela Bianchi. I think that's where I've heard it pronounced. Was the youngest actress to play a leading Bond girl. Director Terrence Young disliked Bianchi's legs and used a stand-in for the scene where Bond spies on the Russian embassy in Istanbul with a periscope. Daniela Bianchi's driver fell asleep during the commute to a 6 a.m. shoot and crashed the car. The actress's face was bruised, and Bianchi's scenes had to be delayed two weeks while these facial contusions healed. Uh, let's see. How did you say Karimbe's name? 
his actor's the actor's name. Oh, Pedro Armendariz. Yes, Pedro Armendariz was terminally ill during filming. He had cancer, which he likely con- uh, contracted due to filming The Conqueror in 1956 in the Utah desert near U.S. nuclear test site. Armendariz accepted this role partially to provide financial security for his wife. The shooting schedule was altered to film his scenes while he was still physically able. Towards the end of filming those scenes, director Terrence Young had to double for the actor in some of his long shots. One month after all his scenes were completed, Amandara's shot himself in Los Angeles Hospital. The brutal fight in the train compartment between James Bond and Donald Red Grant lasts only a few minutes on screen, but took three weeks to film. Most of it was performed by the actors rather than the doubles. And two more here for me, Todd. As a guest on tonight's show in 1962, Robert Shaw said that he had to stand on a wooden crate when filming scenes opposite Sean Connery because he was four inches shorter than Connery. Dang. And lastly, as we mentioned before, the first movie, the first Bond movie to end with a declaration, <laughs> can't talk. The first Bond movie to end with a declaration, James Bond will return, and in this case, it was 1964's Goldfinger. Do you have any others, Todd? He basically took everything. Did I, I just, take every one no, of them? I'm sorry. I did have one other thing, and I, I thought I think it's worth mentioning here is. Uh, Peter Hunt, who went on to actually direct uh, On Her Majesty's Secret Service, was the editor on this movie. And I think he needs to be mentioned here because in watching the documentary after I watched the movie the other night, it was about the making of From Russia With Love. This movie had a lot of rewrites, a lot of re- some reshoots. There were uh, scenes already shot that had rewrites. And uh, there were actually some scenes that when they originally they were sequenced in the film, uh, with rewrites made no sense. Like they didn't start with the chess match. I think they actually started with, and I may be wrong here, Rosa Klebb going to recruit Grant. That's where yeah. they started. And I heard something about like there was like a scene where like some like I think maybe where Bond was being dro- driven around or something, like takes control of a car or something right. like that. Like all kinds of stuff. I heard there was it. a lot of reshoots. There was a lot of rewrites. Uh, you know, as filming was going on. So uh, a nod to Peter Hunt here. Like I say, he got his chance to direct with On Her Majesty's Secret Service, but. He actually was very instrumental in working along with director Terrence Young and pulling this thing together and uh, turning what could have been a train wreck into probably one of the classic Bond films of all time. Oh, yeah, sure. And actually in all those kind of re-jostling and reworking scenes, they didn't quite know where to work in that, you know, Red Grant killing the uh, fake Bond. Mm-hmm. So they kind of put that, let's put it before the titles. And so we actually get our first pre-credits, pre-credits. teaser. Yeah. Nice. Did not know that. <laughs> um. Which ranks higher for you, Todd? Which, which, which ranks higher on your list, Dr. No or From Russia With Love? From Russia With Love. Okay. I could see that. I think I think it adds a lot to the character. I think it's like it's a great like Bond espionage film. It's like, again, as we go, it's a little bit diminishing returns and we get a little bit silly, but this is, this is grounded and we're, we're, we're getting into peak. I think, I think yeah. next time with Goldfinger, we hit, you, uh, you hit the apex there. For me, you, you're there. I don't know what you mean. Liar. <laughs> so, Ty, which film has the better opening title sequence, Dr. No or From Russia With Love? I think I'm still going to give the nod here to Dr. No. I think it was just something special about that simplistic approach with just the James Bond theme, you know, the most iconic theme in the series for me. Yeah, I can't disagree. I I think that, that opening, you know, that uh, that – just hitting that, nah, 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 just yeah. something about it with Doctor No. Even though you know we get some really good theme songs later on in the series, but it's, it's hard to beat that original opening. Right? Um, is this a top ten Bond film for you, Todd? For me, it is. It it really is. Yeah, I, I think maybe one day we need to go through and, and rank all these, but I would be hard pressed to say that it would be outside of my top ten either. I think it's definitely a top ten Bond film. Uh, last question I had for you. Is there anything you would change about the film, Todd? As honestly as I sit here today recording, I can't think of anything I would change. <laughs> yeah, honestly. Like I said, the only thing I think is a little bit weak for me is the boat scene. But right. would I actually change it? No. I think as it is, I think it, it functions and works perfectly. And like I said, it's one of my favorite Bond films. And like like we were saying before, this is this is peak Bond. This is peak Bond. If you if you're not enjoying these early Bond films, and I I think I don't think you'll find much later on that's right. Any if this better. is not if this is not hitting for you yet, you, you ain't going to find a whole lot you're going to like later. I don't think exactly. Uh, ready to give our reviews? I'm ready. 
We rank films on a 1 to 10 scale. Starting from 1, the ranks are Torture, 2 Awful, 3 Bad, 4 Subpar, 5 Mediocre, 6 Decent, 7 Good, 8 Great, 9 Amazing, 10 Masterpiece. Todd, give us your final thoughts and review score for From Russia With Love. From Russia With Love is my second favorite Connery Bond film. A truly amazing spy classic from a pre-gadget laden era of Bond. Uh, the Bond Grant fight scene on the train is one of, one of, if not the best fight sequences in the entire series, in my opinion. I give From Russia with Love an eight, which is great. We're uh, completely in sync here. I also give From Russia with Love an eight out of ten, which ranks it as great. Uh, Todd, can you tell everyone how they can find us and stay up to date with us on social media? We are at Tau Capes on YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. Tau Capes Podcast on Facebook. You can also email us at talcapespod at gmail.com. Also, if you're so obliged, leaving us a five-star review on your podcast app of choice really helps the show. Popcorn Moms will return next week. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time, bye, guys. See you, guys.